not every day I get to make this video because um, what I'm going to show you depends heavily on the weather. And as you can clearly see, these windows are all fogged up. It's actually, wow, look at this clock, look at this. So, everything in this room is dripping wet. Everything, the ceiling, the fixtures, the fan, everything is soaking wet. Any surface in this room, wet. The walls. And there's a reason for that. It's not because water's coming in here. It's because it's because of the rapid change in temperature. So it was cold, very cold, um, yesterday, last night, into the morning. Then all of a sudden, we get a warm blast of air come in. And because these windows aren't airtight, moisture just kind of flows right through the room um, and we get condensation and that's what caused the paint on this ceiling to fail prematurely it's actually already I've already scraped it to the bare wood and I've done it all over again but it's still not quite out of the woods yet this typically happens in the spring and in the fall periods of rapid weather change or temperature change um, normally we don't get rain in December <laughs> in New Hampshire, but normally it doesn't snow in Hawaii either, and well, guess what? So, yes, climate change is real, folks, the cause of which is what people are debating over. Anyway, so this is why I need to do something to this room soon, because this kind of condensation, it makes it hard to keep a nice paint job in this room. It, make, it makes it hard to keep nice things in this room because anything electronic gets damaged. Now this is an outdoor rated fan. Okay, it's not rated for direct wind ex or direct water exposure or rain, but it is rated for this kind of environment. So it should be okay. And everything else we have in here is pretty much, you know, it, it's holding up fine. This is where we keep all the liquor and stuff from family parties and gatherings. It just ends up out here. It's become kind of a, an informal bar, but it's wood, so it's not, it's absorbing the water rather than, yeah. Let's take a look at the garage and I'll, I'll tell you what I mean. So the difference between this room and the garage is the garage is actually somewhat, um, not airtight, but everything in the garage is sealed. There's weather stripping on the doors. The windows are nice and tight. So you look at the doorknob on this side, soaking wet. On this side, it's bone dry. So we go in the garage, and it's a completely different environment. It's bone, everything's dry. Snow blower is covered in dust. It's dry, everything's dry. And that's because this garage door has seals all around it that prevent an inrush of air from the outside coming in and condensing on all the cold surfaces. So it's actually colder right now. This garage is colder than the breezeway, but the temperature doesn't fluctuate as rapidly. Now, if I were to open that door right now, leave it open for a few minutes, maybe half an hour. If it was, whether it's raining or not, that warm, humid air will come right in and get everything all wet. This is why it's important if you store things in your in your home, in a, in a space like a garage or an enclosed porch, that those spaces not only be protected from falling rain, but you also have to protect them from... Um, excuse me, from air and, or air in, uh, intrusion, or air ingress uh, from the outside, or rapid um, airflow. So that's why putting weather stripping on your doors and making sure that your windows properly close and seal. These windows actually don't open, 
They never have, they never will. Uh, they're fixed position windows. That's what the builder put in and that's what's still here. Um, but they match the rest of the windows in the house, so that's fine. But anyway, <laughs> the point being, you wanna protect these environments from air intrusion. I remember my parents, they had a garage, it was a little bigger than that, actually it was a two car garage. Uh, one, one and a half, maybe a, you could park two Honda Civics in it, okay? Anyway, what they would do is, you know, um, during the summer and spring, actually pretty much all year round, the garage door would be cracked open a little bit so that the dog could come and go. Um, they'd bring their dog out in the garage and he'd go out in the yard and do his thing and come back. And just that, maybe, maybe one foot, having the door open by one foot, you'd go out in that garage um, on days like this and everything would be soaking wet. His toolboxes, the contents, he'd open up a drawer, the wrenches would be dripping wet um, and rusting. Oh my God, all of his tools were rusting in that garage. All the cans of paint would be rusting. Everything would be just destroyed. And it's because air was allowed to flow right into the garage in periods of rapid weather change. Like for example, the, the garage would be closed up all night long. And then on a warm spring morning, he would open the door to let the dog out or even to, to, to drive into or out of the garage and within a few minutes. All that cold metal, those cold surfaces would be just wet. And that's what we have going on in the breezeway. Everything is wet. Now, when I painted this room, I only used exterior grade paints. And that's kind of helped keep things nice and dry. Well, it's helped to keep things, you know, from rotting out. But <laughs> what I'm gonna do, and I've really been thinking this over, I've gotta pull permits and all that jazz. But what I wanna do in this room is I want to blow out these walls, just remove them, get rid of them, put them in a dumpster somewhere. And I'm gonna frame these openings in with a nice, probably a, a slider type window here. I'm gonna put a nice slider window and a nice entry door right there, possibly. Now, the problem is the height from the floor to that, uh, this piece right here, the height is too short for a standard door. Um, and from what I can tell, that is where the beams are to support the, uh, the roof structure. Um, when they built this, so when they built this room originally, more than likely it had either, it was completely open and it had just that beam right there on both sides, either that or it had removable uh, wooden um, screens that would just kind of, you would just latch, latch them in, in place, you know, and, and, you would, and in the winter you would take them down and put glass or something up. At some point, I don't know when, but these jealousy windows were installed. Now these were very popular in the, in the 1950s and 60s in the US. They still remain popular in areas like Hawaii. Uh, but in the U.S., these were pretty much exclusively a 1950s and 60s affair, and uh, they were very popular. Um, a lot of houses in this neighborhood still have them, but most of them have been replaced by now. Anyway, so what we have to do is put in a nice insulated wall on either side, and um, that will mitigate the problem. Now for the back, I thought about doing a six foot sliding glass door. I think I'm gonna change my mind. The cost of an insulate, the cost of a sliding glass door is astronomical. Now, 
I can get custom doors made that will fit these opening, that will fit the, the height, um, but just barely, just barely. Um, so, you know, that's, that's gonna be a bit of a, a bit of a nightmare, but um, I think I can get it done. So I'm gonna put a door there and a door there. This will be an in-swinging door. And then we're gonna put um, a window right there. And we're gonna keep the table there. The freezer is gonna have to go somewhere else because I can't have an in-swinging door hitting my freezer. Not that we, actually, I might just get rid of this freezer. We don't even use it. We have stuff in here, but this is a place where food is forgotten. <laughs> I'd like to just get rid of it. Seriously, we, we, we got this. This is my parents' freezer. They didn't need it, so we took it. And we're like, oh yeah, we'll just fill it with stuff. And um, we did, and it just sits here and doesn't really contribute much to the household. <laughs> but, hey, freezer. Um, I'm just tired of paying to run it. It doesn't use much power, but it uses power, so. Anyway, so yeah, that's the plan. I want to do that. I want to have these walls. Well, I will do it myself, but I want to blow these walls out and reframe them. Insulate this room. Oh my god. It's just... I bet if I turn this fan on, water will just go slinging everywhere. Let's do that. Let's see what it does. Look at this light fixture. This is a brand new fan. <laughs> Let's see if I can get... Oh yeah, I can feel it now. There's water slinging off the blades. Just a little bit. But this is why this room got an outdoor rated fan. I'm wondering if I leave this go, if I leave it run, if it'll help to... Uh, dry this room up. I don't think so. Because you're just circulating hot, humid air. Probably make it worse. I don't like how that motor telegraphs that 60 hertz hum into the beams, which is quite loud and obnoxious, actually. You can hear it. Can you guys hear that? loud as hell. Yeah, buddy. So yeah, so that's what we're up against. Anyway. So yeah, this room is, uh, this room is just where things get wet. And there was a time when I had electronics out here. I was going to put a TV or something I'm glad I didn't because talking instant short circuit. Absolutely. It's windy too. Something keeps setting off my motion lights. Anyway. So as for the floor. Go, 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 go. You're not going out, sorry. So as for the floor, what I'm gonna do is when I have the walls all, when I have all this ripped out, I'm going to um, have somebody come down here and grind the floor down um, with, a, uh, with a concrete grinder. They actually sell, they sell, they make these machines that you can grind surface on, on a concrete floor to remove either to to remove um, old mastic and you know basically to resurface it. So once it's ground down to bare concrete, I'm going to do a tile floor once once the walls are built up and framed and everything, and that's all finished on the inside. I'm going to do a tile job in here, and that's how I'm going to finish off this room. I've never done tile work before, so that'll be exciting. Um, but that's what I have to do. That's what I have to do. I don't have a choice. Um, this floor has held up pretty well, I'll be honest. 
This is an epoxy floor that I put in um, over top of an old alkalid floor, oil-based paint. I was unable to remove all the oil-based paint because it just wasn't just wasn't happening. It was the toughest. Every strip, every kind of stripper that I threw at it, um, just left. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> the paint ain't coming up. So then what I did is I just let it dry. I put down a uh, primer coat and I put down the epoxy. And that was about two years ago. And so far, with few exceptions, I think it's chipping up over here. But we put carpet down to kind of protect it. And uh, it's held up pretty well. But as I was saying, it, it's not long for this world, so I want to do a nice, uh, nice tile floor. It's something kind of anti-slip, even. So, anyway, that's not today. That's not tomorrow. That's probably going to be a couple years down the road. But because uh, we had this nice humid wave come in in the middle of winter, <laughs> December rainstorm. I decided it would be a good opportunity to bring this up on a video and we can talk about it. This was, a, this was an electrical project I tackled um, back in August, I think. I think it was August. I, I went up and I, I installed a, a ceiling fan rated box, ran some wire, and uh, yeah, we did a whole video on that, I think. I took that outlet over there and I repurposed it as an unswitched outlet, put it on a different circuit, and bada boom, bada bing. And uh, listen to that wind. I'm sure you guys can hear that. Um, sit in that chair and do exactly what that pillow says. Relax. It's a nice little room though. Ooh, now you can hear the wind. It's coming right through it. I've got these closed, by the way. And yeah, they don't they don't close all the way. They're junk. I mean, these these jealousy windows are absolutely fucking useless. Um, you know, they were nice when they were new, I'm sure, but they've been patched and fixed and hacked so many times that they're just junk. Um, they really are. I tried covering. Now, I was gonna do. I actually started the process of doing this. I was going to put plastic over these windows. The problem was these switch, or these switch boxes, these uh, gear, I have cranks. I took the cranks off, by the way, but all of the crank boxes were in the way. I couldn't, I couldn't do plastic because they, when I shrank the plastic with the air dryer, like you're supposed to, what was happening was um, the gear boxes would poke through. So I'm like, well, fuck you too. <laughs> like, I just, I can't do this. There are other ways. What I could do is actually build a wooden frame out of, uh, I just thought of this now, I could build a wooden frame out of um, strapping and put some construction plastic, staple it to the wooden frame and then, you know, screw it into position. I'm just not gonna do that. But uh, I can feel that nice, it's a nice breeze I'm feeling actually with these windows closed. Gosh. I can't wait to get something done here. I, it's not going to be terribly expensive. Um, the cost of lumber, I mean, it's a small wall. The real cost is I'm going to have to reside this whole side of the garage to make it look right. And I'm going to do it in gray. I'm going to do it in a different color than the rest of the house. I'm thinking a gray vertical, like a board and batten style vinyl. I think that would look nice. And I'll do the whole front of the garage and the breezeway. The rest of the house is white and brick. I think that would look really, I think that would look quite nice actually. Make it look a little different. Anyway, I hear the cats meowing at me. Well, that's all we have for now. Thank you for watching. And uh, hopefully in, a, in about one or two years, we'll see what happens, see how finances look and uh, see what building materials cost in, in two or three years. And. Um, We'll uh, hopefully do something with this space and get rid of this poor quality window nonsense.